Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And I hope everybody is having a great weekend. The UFC fights just ended. How do you guys uh, rate the UFC event? If you guys did watch UFC, if you guys do watch UFC, leave that down in the comments below. Also, let me know how your guys' weekend is going. But today we are going to be talking about a few things with Ripple and, of course, XRP. First up, the events that are happening around Ripple. So recently they just had a huge event, which was Token 2049. This was not specifically centered around Ripple or anything like that, but they did make some noise there. And uh, we do see that this is from Cindy Young. Uh, she was talking about opportunities and challenges in Web3. And we do see the next big event being talked about here, which, by the way, this uh, is over. This was an event that was from the 9th to the 10th. Um, but we do see, I wonder what Ripple is going to announce at Swell this month. And yes, if you guys haven't uh, been aware, we have been waiting for the Ripple Swell event, which we will talk about here in a second. Uh, but we do see over here from Cindy Young. Uh, she says, passing through Canary Wharf yesterday, I couldn't help but get some photos of Ripple's fantastic new crypto means business ad campaign. We launched it to highlight that crypto solutions are here to stay, and we are already making a real impact on businesses around the world. Uh, the biggest thing about this to me is uh, having Cindy Young be a big voice around Ripple is the fact that she was working at MasterCard before, of course, working at Ripple. And not only that, but also, you know, to me, I think that crypto is going to be a big, big, big industry going forward. I know that recently with the FTX situations and a lot of things happening, I'm still very, very bullish on crypto. Listen, these... These, uh, these exchanges and these projects that collapse are not the face value of crypto. Um, they do stifle a lot of movement, adoption, and interest around crypto. Um, but at the end of the day, we all know that crypto will be the core value uh, behind a lot of things, especially finance. I, I, I really do think that finance is going to be shaken up by by crypto, especially XRP. You know, we, we, we always talk about XRP, and I know that this campaign itself is from Ripple. It's not XRP. Ripple isn't XRP. XRP isn't Ripple. We get that. But still, this is very good for crypto, and it's very good for XRP as well, because we know Ripple utilizes XRP in a lot of their processes. So when we look at the offerings here around crypto, especially from Ripple, it's very beneficial for XRP. And I love this campaign that they are pushing, because it really does put a spotlight on the real value behind crypto, not you know, the, the trash that gets pushed all the time around, you know, oh yeah, this is speculation, this is speculation. We know that crypto has the potential and the power to fully disrupt a lot of things around business. Now, this Swell event is going to be huge. We've been talking about it. We've been focused on it for a while, ever since it got fully announced because of the speakers behind it, because of the agenda behind it. Uh, we now know that this is going to be in three days. So uh, get ready. Three days is a very short time to wait, and there's going to be a ton of speakers here. We've been talking about the speakers for a while because these are very substantial names around business as well as finance. Uh, some of the biggest names in finance and business are going to be there, and it's very exciting. We have the agenda over here. Um, before, that, you couldn't really see this, but um, now you can see it, see it. And a lot of it is centered around like the global payment landscape. We also see CBDCs being mentioned, liquidity, uh, payment use cases, stuff like that. It's going to definitely be something interesting. And we also do see like institutional finance talking about DeFi. And like I said, a lot of the major names are here. Uh, you can kind of compare some of the names here that are uh, going to be discussing this and talking about it. Very exciting. Very exciting. And um, I cannot wait. And I do think that a lot of discussions around regulations and stuff like that will be mentioned. I also do think that XRP will definitely come up in conversation because of liquidity and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. Definitely exciting. Also, if you wanted to read more about like crypto means business, you can over here on their website as well, like time to transform finance. And it goes on to mention a few things around this, which again, very exciting. Also, uh, Tranglo will be there in, um, well, on the 16th to the 17th, sorry, in London, making a ton of noise. We do see something big is coming, Tranglo and then Ripple. Uh, we're giving you 3,000 more reasons to consider us for your cross-border payment needs. If you love promos and rebates, contact us. We're going to Ripple Swell too. Um, yeah, I do think that something big is going to be announced at Ripple Swell. 
Um, I think that this is definitely exciting, and we do see over here Ripple's on-demand liquidity allows us to offer faster and more secure transactions without costly pre-funding, just what you need to achieve maximum growth from XRP Crow. We do see one of the Asia's leading cross-border payment hubs, providing 25 countries with technology that makes cross-border transactions faster, affordable, and more secure. And by the way, like Trangolo has been extremely bullish on... Uh, Ripple and XRP for a very long time, even if you go over to their website, you can actually look through all of their offerings and most of it does include XRP with on-demand liquidity. Don't know why their website is not loading. My internet has been uh, pretty rough lately, so uh, I do apologize for this. I'm actually in the middle of upgrading, so it is rough. But if you go over to their website, tringlo.com, you can look through all of their stuff and it definitely does talk about on-demand liquidity. It talks about Ripple and XRP and uh, yeah. Very exciting times, very interesting as well. And, you know, even here you guys do see them talking about Ripple with XRP and on-demand liquidity and stuff like that and all the efficiencies that they do gain from that partnership. And uh, also over here, Brazil is making great strides in Web3 and crypto adoption. What sets Brazil apart from the rest of Latin in great part, their diversity. And we do see down here on-demand liquidity. Um, you know, we view this partnership as a strategic opportunity that will bring the benefit of crypto to many in the region in a saving compliant way. TravelX Bank has always been a forward looking company and we're pleased to be leading the charge of traditional financial institutions who are emerging the benefits of crypto and utilizing its power for real use cases that can dramatically change the way we move and manage money. And uh, if you guys did want to go read this, you guys are more than welcome to. Definitely very exciting. Um, I think that TravelX Bank is definitely going to be a big one. and. You know, this definitely does talk about crypto and it talks about the years going forward as well around adoption, Web3, the expansion of, you know, DeFi, tokenization, all that kind of stuff. Very exciting times, very interesting times as well. You know, I, I think that the biggest thing around these uh, rough times in this market that people kind of forget is just how big crypto is becoming. Um, you know, we always look at the negatives and you know okay everything's crashing blah 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 we've always heard it we've always seen it if you have been around this market for a while you know that these events happen you know that you know crypto gets bearish at times but ultimately we all know that at the end of the day you know things are bullish or are bearish until they're not and then they get extremely bullish and we've seen this all the time going all the way back to march of 2020 the bear market of 2017 2018's bull run i mean at the end of the day we know what is going to be happening going forward soon. We will officially know when our bottom is there because you, you never can time the bottom, but what happens after the bottom is morphed into reality comes generational wealth. I mean, it's going to be wealth beyond the means of what most people actually anticipate. So I'm very excited for what happens after all this, you know, dust is settled and after we could really kind of, you know, look into the future on what is going to happen around crypto. But this event definitely is one to stay uh, tuned for in terms of the Ripple Swell event, because I think that we will see a lot of discussions around the events that have unfolded. And also we do see over here from Ripple with our payment solution companies like FOMO Pay can streamline internal treasury management, free up working capital, accelerate business cash flow, learn more details about the benefits. And uh, yeah, if you actually look over here, this goes back to July of 2022. But hey, we already know that the efficiencies around on-demand liquidity are definitely going to continue to shine the greatest within this market because these are real world applications. These are, you know, real use cases you know, morphing into reality that are disrupting crucial aspects of business as well as finance. And we even do see here, like, you know, this is a payments institution works with merchants and banks around the world to enable cashless payment processing at every point of sale. Uh, treasury management via traditional payment rails has left global companies and financial institutions with the burden of pre-funding accounts and trapping, uh, trapping capital, hindering business growth as a result. And we do see the out uh, data infrastructure has also driven corporations around the world to spend an estimated $3.5 billion a year to address issues associated with, huh? Wow. Look at that liquidity. So again, like I said, when we really kind of look at things around on-demand liquidity, it is going to be an exciting time going forward around this market to really kind of look at uh, what happens next. Um, I really think that this is the big area. You know, we, we, we've been focused on on-demand liquidity since the dawn of time, essentially around uh, this market as well as around this channel. Um, but it really is something special. The benefits are definitely going to shine great going forward when we look at the, the adoption cycle of fin um, financial institutions as well as banks. And I always say like XRP is going to be a crucial player. It always is. And uh, we also do see over here. So this is talking more so about 
you know, regulations and stuff like that. Um, we do see from Rao Paul. And now we get this. If there's somebody that should get fired for this, it's Gary Gensler. Even you know Brad Garlinghouse and the XRP Ripple guys have been saying you need a ruling. Gensler failed to do his singular job to regulate and listen closely to this. Shout out to Crypto Airy for, for this as well. My actual argument is, is Gary Gensler is he's been so busy saying we will fight you when you do wrong and he has not created a set of rules of which people need to abide by and everybody's been asking him and he's refused to do it and now you get this and i think you know if there's somebody who should get fired for this it's gensler not because oh my god you didn't protect these individuals and it's all happened it's not about the retrospective it's like you failed to do your singular job, which is to regulate a space and everybody, all of the industry, you know, Brian Armstrong, all of these people have been going to him endlessly saying, you need to do something about this. Even, you know, the uh, Brad Garling and the XRP Ripple guys have been saying you need a ruling because nobody can operate. And when nobody operates, the gray area happens and it's this. And it's his fault for being so slow and being so aggressive without actually doing anything. And the reason why, of course, we talk about regulations all the time is because when you really look at regulations, like this is going to open the door for a lot more use cases like, you know, the ones with on-demand liquidity to morph into reality. Like this is one, you know, big opportunity for Ripple. I, I, I really think that regulations are going to benefit Ripple the greatest in this market because they already are set up for mass adoption after regulations are ushered in. And we even do see over here, like, you know, that is called a bridge currency, bridge crypto. That's, in fact, what Ripple is trying to do with XRP. This is Gary Gensler, obviously. You know, he took a 180 turnaround on the statement and said, hey, you know, I, I said it, you know, it, it was good, blah, blah, blah. They always make an excuse. Shout out to XRP Crow for that as well. Um, but listen, regulations are so important to me because... If we get bad regulations, it kills crypto. It really does. Like it's going to stifle a ton of innovation. It's going to stifle a ton of growth. But if we get good regulations, I mean, I mean, like regulations that really kind of accept crypto for what it is and continue to let it grow and morph into the giant that it will be in terms of an industry, um, those regulations could benefit Ripple gr greatly. And anybody holding XRP. You should definitely be happy about that because it, it, it's also going to benefit XRP greatly as well. Because when we look at some of these use cases around Ripple, right, they're focused on some of the biggest customers in the game. Uh, you could go check out their uh, customer overview over here. I mean, like, look at some of these big names. You could see all of the, the major statistics here around some of the names. You could also see some of their uh, case studies, all that kind of stuff. Like, these are some of the biggest names around crypto. And you know, there could be much, much larger names. Um, you know, we, we always look at the adoption cycle of crypto, but the adoption cycle of crypto, I think that the next major stepping stone is financial institutions and banks. I think that those are going to be the key players to adopt crypto fully next and jump into the space, but they won't be able to do so unless the barrier that is regulations is crumbled down and finally gone because regulations are going to be the key that drives a ton of success as well as value to dive into the space. And I think that that's going to be a very exciting time um, for crypto. If we can get beneficial, of course, uh, regulations, which you guys know me, I'm always concerned about. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on because of more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, after you all have a beautiful day, beautiful night. If you guys are on this before, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.